Today we'll knit some festive feet socks, so named because I'm using Mary Maxim festive feet yarn. There will be several versions of this pattern, and on one of them we'll use two beds, and we will also make multiple sizes. Today I'm using any single bed standard gauge machine, and we will knit the size that will fit a lady's size six and a half foot. The yarn is a classic sock blend of superwash wool and polyamide. Gauge is 8 stitches, 10.4 rows per inch. If you can't match both, match the stitch gauge and adjust the row count to make the length correct. I'm going to use my brother button push button machine because I love it and to be inclusive of vintage knitting machine owners. Stitch size 6 worked for me. Start by e-wrapping 64 needles. Bring them all the way forward and make sure the machine is set to knit back from hold. At main stitch size, knit 20 rows. We don't reduce stitch size here because of where the top of the sock will fit the wearer. When the 20 rows are complete, lift the e-wraps and hang them on the working needles to close the hem. Knit 50 plain stockinette rows for the sock top. Now, here's a tricky part I didn't tell you about until now. I am actually trying to match one sock that I already knitted, and I knitted this sock on a Corona machine, not on this machine. The Corona required a different stitch size, but I have been able to match the gauge, and it looks like I'm getting matching socks. Yay! I love to do this kind of thing to demonstrate how much we can get the same behavior from most machines. When socks have seams, we prefer those seams to run along the inside of the foot to be less noticeable. So you can see this is a right sock because that will make the seam down the inside of the right foot. So to knit a pair, we need to make sure that on one sock, the right 32 stitches are used for the heel and on the other, the left 32 stitches are used. So in this case, I'm ready to use the right 32 stitches to knit the heel. Remember to set your carriage to leave stitches that are brought all the way forward and hold. On this machine, move this lever back to two. It will be the side levers also on Singer Studio Silver Reed machines, but on a more modern brother, it will be the H button. After knitting across on all 32 stitches, place one and hold, knit across, place another and hold, and keep repeating that. What we're doing here is the automatic wrap. We're not manually wrapping. You may, if you would like to do it and prefer to do it, but I love this method. This part of the process is called short rowing in because we're moving inward and every row has one less stitch in it. Sometimes you have to Enlarge the stitch very slightly to put it into hold if the tension has pulled up a little too much. You almost always need claw weights or a combination of a claw weight and your thumbs. Some people on some machine can manage just by putting downward pressure on those stitches that are still knitting with their thumbs or fingertips. Depends on the machine and your agility level, but Next to the held stitches, the knitting forms a pocket, and as that pocket grows, the likelihood of dropping additional stitches gets higher and higher. They loosen on the still knitting needles. Thus, the downward pressure prevents mishaps. And this is the whole secret of short rowing. Downward pressure on those needles that are still knitting in the right place at the right time. That's all there is to it. When we are done short rowing in, we begin short rowing out. On this particular pattern, by the time we're done short rowing in, there should be 10 needles. Now push one opposite the carriage back to work, knit across, and repeat this until all 32 are back in work. The downward pressure provided by your fingers, thumbs, and weights needs to continue. Note that I'm knitting with my left hand and my right thumb and fingertips are still holding on to the knitting and pulling against the natural tendency for it to pop up. I haven't had a single problem. Just about there. 
And now back to knitting on all the needles. Knit straight in plain stockinette for 54 rows. These socks will come out about eight inches in circumference. Generally, we like our socks to have negative ease. So these will fit a foot that is between eight and eight and three quarters inches around. If that will fit your foot, but the length isn't correct, you may alter the row count and make the socks work for other shoe sizes. Or you can wait until I work out all the sizes and write up the pattern for country knitting of main news and views. And here we repeat the heel operation exactly as we did before for the toe. I know that when you look at your foot, the toe and the heel don't seem to be the same thing, but repeating it makes a beautiful toe, so we'll do that. Short row in for 22 rows. There will be 10 stitches left after placing the final needle and hold. Then short row out for 22 rows. Here I'm just finishing up the short rowing out. Now we need to seam the end of the toe together. And I'm going to show you one way to do it that does make a seam on the top of the foot. And that is to lift all the stitches from one half of the work. Fold the fabric over, place them on top of the other half of the stitches, and bind them off together. I am using a skinny stainless steel circular needle that I got from eBay that works very well for me. You could also use waste yarn. You can take the stitches off one at a time or work it through, work the needle through in groups as I have learned to do. And this needle is so skinny that it will pull out when we're done with it. So at present, the left half of, sti of the stitches are on my skinny circular needle and I am replacing them onto the machine to share the 32 needles that are still holding stitches. A seam on the top of a sock toe is an okay thing to do for comfort if you don't mind the looks, if you're going to be wearing them as bed socks or around the house lounging socks or in loose shoes. It is a bad idea if you are making them for soldiers, people who are on their feet all day, and hikers, because the chance that a seam could cause a blister would create a danger in those situations. So for that, you really must learn to Kitchener stitch. But if these socks are not for that kind of wear, and you just don't feel up to Kitchenering at the moment, try seaming. Bring the needles forward, and slide out that skinny needle. Or if you used waste yarn, you may remove it at this point or later. With the two sets of stitches sharing the needles, we can now bring the needles forward and bind off around the gate pegs using the latch tool method and get the nice neat seam that you see on the socks. If you don't know how to Kitchener stitch and would like to learn, I do have whole videos on the subject. Plus, in the Corona version of this pattern, I go into it somewhat. So you could also look at that, and you'll see it being done in this very yarn in this very pattern. I believe we have achieved a genuine pair.